parks for decades. Another thing you might expect to see if you're planning to visit a theme park anytime soon is the expansion of contactless payment methods. Disney already has this with its magic bands, but as other theme parks continue to reopen during the pandemic, that technology could be expanded. In Gurney, Illinois, Grady Trimble, Fox Business. Okay, we now want to update you on the state of the protest, which has been going on a march through the city for hours. And we're at a bit of an impasse here. That group was turned around at Edgewood and sent down Downer. Now they are back on Oakland Avenue. I want to tell you where they are. This is Oakland uh, on the east side of Oakland there. As we pull out, you're going to see a liquor store. You're going to see Otto's Liquor Store. There is just to the north of that a guitar store, Wade's Guitar Store. To the north of that is an accountant office. To the south of where you're looking right there, there is a barber shop, and you just see a little pushing right there between demonstrators themselves. So we're not sure we're going to stay on this shot. This is on the, uh, the block of Oakland that also has a, a restaurant, Italian restaurant, Carini's, is right there. This is all happening right there, and you see the police lined up. Now, what's happening here? We don't know what's causing these particular people to scuttle, but now we're seeing people head south. And we are seeing a little break in the ranks there. Uh, we're just going to, do we have any sound with this? We're trying to get some sound here. Okay. I just want to let you know where this is as people continue to protest there. We saw some people with their hands up and we saw a little break there. People started to run south. The crowd has really diminished. We need to point that out. They, uh, they let them march for hours throughout the city. Law enforcement, at one point earlier in the evening, there was an impasse over the uh, overpass on North Avenue, and the sheriff's deputies had formed a wall. And then they opened up, and they just let those protesters go. And there were great cheers at that point. This was around 6.30 or so uh, in the daylight still. And then the crowd cheered and started chanting, march with us, march with us. That was a tense moment that was broken up, but uh, law enforcement here drawing a line to say you are not coming any farther north here on Oakland Avenue as uh, our crews have met up. We've had two separate crews there, uh, Bill Miston and his photojournalist and Andy Conkle, who has marched with this group since the inception of this march tonight. And um, Mary, you're familiar yeah, with and this Ted, area. You know, we have seen most of the protesters uh, throughout the evening, really the vast majority of them, protesting in a peaceful manner, in organized manner. Yep. And so uh, this is this crowd, as you can see, being turned away here. This is the first time that we have seen this crowd get unruly this evening, at least from what we have seen from our vantage point. But you can see the layers, throngs of uh, police there ready to take enforcement actions if needed, if things do get further out of control there. But, a very and, ominous sight there in uh, downtown, uh, in our area right now, going on at um, Oakwood, Oakland, rather, in Edgewood. Yeah. And, and you saw some scuffle between protesters, and, and I don't know if it was one protester trying to say, hey, no, we've been peaceful thus far tonight. You're not going to ruin it for us. We I have no idea what that's going to was. It just... It would be speculation on my part. But now we have some sound, so we're going to try to listen in if we can. Yeah, we see a lot of the protesters there just visibly agitated, of course, uh, expressing their concern. We don't know exactly what they're saying. We don't know what they are uh, disgruntled about right now, if they're being told to restrain themselves, to refrain, and so that's kind of the source of the agitation there. Again, we don't know. We've just gotten on scene here at Oakland and Edgewood. And this would be Milwaukee police. This is still in the city of Milwaukee here. Um, and some, some long-time businesses. I mean, again, Otto's Liquor has been there for decades. Carini's Restaurant has been there for decades. Wade's Guitar Shop, the same thing. People who live on the east side and upper east side in Shorewood and Whitefish Bay, they visit these establishments. They know exactly where this is. On the west side of the street, uh, there is a, uh, another restaurant. Uh, there is a smoke shop. Uh, there's a tattoo parlor. And then as you head south, where that car, that orange car is pointing south, then you get into residential areas again, back toward UWM. But these are businesses, uh, these are businesses that have been hit pretty hard. Carini's, for, just for sake of... Uh, disclosure, I got takeout from there uh, Friday night. They are waiting to reopen again so that they can have customers sit in and they are trying to survive 
just doing takeout business. Um, Otto's Liquor, again, a, a, a business that is all over Milwaukee, but in this particular location has been there for a very long time, at least for the 28 years that I've lived in that neighborhood. So uh, I'm pretty familiar with where this is happening right now and why police decided right here and right then this is where we're going to stop you. But they had successfully turned them around. The vast majority of this crowd looks to be gone already. I'm not sure what this particular group is, who they are, why they are staying right there. And we hope to check in with Bill Miston here to find out if he can more. But there seems to be an internal dialogue happening between the protesters themselves here. I am Milwaukee police um, with their shields and their batons and their uh, vests. That they're not doing anything here. They are just saying, uh-uh, this is the point where you're not going any further north for the night. There's a curfew in place, um, and we're not letting you walk any further. So now it's up to the crowd. As, um, as we mentioned before uh, in a Bill Miston report, and we're still trying to get Bill live here, uh, Bill said the leaders of this um, march which they stress was peaceful and diverse. And at times, if you allow me to use the words, even joyous, there were drum lines at one point and people were marching along. The leader of this said, it's now past nine, we are now in a curfew. And um, you're on your own. And now police are starting to push back. Yeah, Ted, I'm listening uh, right along with you. I've seemed to uh, keep losing audio here, so my apologies sure. for the, uh, the quietness over here on my end. But again, uh, you know, as we see here, it looks as though you see law enforcement, though, uh, kind of bum rushing the crowd there right now, trying to detain people. And we see this girl who's been agitated for quite some time, it would appear, uh, now being detained rather forcefully by police as she is on the ground. And it looks as though there's a bit of a scuffle there that has ensued. And now uh, I think they're sending, trying to flush them back down Oakland Avenue. Don't want to say that Milwaukee police have given protesters carte blanche because there have been places they weren't allowed to go. They weren't allowed to go on the interstate, for example. But Milwaukee police said earlier in the day, Chief Morales said earlier in the day, we're going to respect your right to peacefully protest. There are two types of protest. In peaceful protest, we salute. Once vandalism starts, once looting starts, that is entirely different. And he pointed out that the, of the arrest in the leading up to today, in the last two nights, of the 60 people arrested, all but three of them were from the city of Milwaukee. So not sure exactly. That's right. He did say Go that. Ahead, uh, Mary, I'm sorry. He did say today that, you know, the lawlessness, uh, that's what he was referring to, you know, has to stop. And he, uh, the mayor echoed those comments saying that, you know, you have a right to protest and we welcome peaceful protests. But they did not want to see uh, a scene like this tonight where things were getting out of hand. And of course, they want to protect the residents in these communities and, of course, the businesses. Um, but it looks as though it's, uh, you know, things are, it would appear as though getting increasingly dramatic out there as uh, some of these protesters just not backing down, not refusing to turn around and, and go home and um, d outwardly defying here the curfew order now two hours and six minutes into effect. There seems, if I can pick up on what's happening here, and we're going to get to Bill Mist in the second we can establish his audio, a disagreement on within the group that's remaining 
about what their goal is, what the purpose is here. Um, and the only skirmish we saw up until a few moments ago was the skirmish between protesters themselves. And then we're not sure what the one woman did to be apprehended. Not sure, we could not see off camera what she did or said or did, but police did go get her. So it appears that one person has been taken into custody at this scene. Right, and that's all we could see at that at one point is the, the one woman. And like you said, it seems to be a disagreement between the protesters themselves. And interestingly, Ted, you know, it was such a large group earlier, a huge yeah. volume of people. It's kind of hard to see from this vantage point exactly how many people are out there. Presumably, it's still quite a large gathering. But again, hard to see exactly the number of people there gathered. I'd uh, have at to, Oakland and Edgewood there. Yeah. And, and Andy Conkle must be listening to us because he's doing exactly what I was hoping he was doing. He's pointing the camera south down Oakland. It doesn't seem more than 30 or 40 there, Mary, if, if that many. Right. And there were hundreds upon hundreds before marching over the interstate, uh, through the east side, down into a bit of um, uh, downtown, just south of downtown into uh, the third ward, then back up, past the police administration building, uh, onto the east side. I mean, this snaked around parts of the city, it started more than five hours ago. And so here are some peaceful protesters with their hands in the air, the symbolic hands up, don't shoot. And there's some sort of negotiation happening here between police. But as you mentioned, it seems as though right now the police are outnumbering the protesters. And as you see, there are a number of protesters with their hands up, obeying, uh, trying to say here, you know, we're doing nothing wrong, our hands are up. It's just uh, a minuscule number of protesters now compared to what we saw a little bit earlier this evening. And look, we're taking this live and we're showing you what's happening live. You're going to hear some language that is offensive to some and, you know, there's not a lot we can do about that right here. So we just want to show you what is happening live in the city of Milwaukee. So if you know, and interestingly, Ted, the protesters at this point could be ticketed, a hefty ticket. They could be potentially arrested. But if just based on the curfew order and the fact that the police are not uh, aggressively going after these remaining amount of protesters is sending a message, we can presume, that they want things to dissolve peacefully right. and efficiently. Yeah, the question, that's exactly right, Mary. It seems to me, and that's the SWAT team as I got closer here, I've, I've actually left the set and walked up to a monitor so I can see closer. Uh, you can see that he, uh, that officer there, the sergeant with his hands on his stomach right there, trying to talk. He seems to be the lead negotiator. He is a member of the SWAT team there, okay? And uh, you can read from his body language. Seems to be saying, look, got a lot of people here. We're lined up, trying to keep things calm. And not agitate the crowd anymore, or at least the couple people that there are, you know, quite right. visibly upset. It seems as though he's just trying to, you know, squelch the, uh, the anxiety the turbulence and the anger right now. Let's hear if we can hear what he's saying. The officers are chanting, move back, and it seems to be working. This is southbound. They're moving south. That front line there is right even with uh, the darkened restaurant you see in the back. That is Caridi's, a long time Sicilian restaurant. And now we're getting into the residential stretch here. And the police have stopped. Letting the group decide, all right, how, how far do you want to go here? What do you want to do? Your move. 
This seems to be a very methodical procession there. You have to uh, think that they have gone over this drill, if you will, members of the law enforcement that we see there about how to disperse this crowd. If it got out of hand, it seems to be well practiced, well organized. Um, and it seems as though they are making progress and getting that crowd to retreat just a bit. And uh, some it appears as though leaving, going home, uh, and quieting down while others do remain on scene, as you see there. Yeah. Traffic is still allowed to flow there. It, interesting. They haven't shut down all of Oakland here, just this part here. And so now, as you can see, members of the uh, tactical unit falling back a bit. And there we see uh, law enforcement breaking up to a certain degree, heading back. I don't know if law enforcement is. I think law enforcement is forming two columns, as they say, uh, as a defense. And you're going to have these guys sort of saying, how, how much room are you giving me here? How much room are you going to get? I, I, don't think, I don't think the law enforcement is leaving that area anytime soon. Now, you can see some of those officers with the orange... And there, Andy is listening to me as we speak here. Um, you see one there with a lot of ties, as if they are expecting to make some arrest. And all right, they're falling back a little bit. Others remaining there in front of the barber shop, a smoke shop. The restaurant, like I say. And you get the feeling there by the way that they are moving and, and the groups they're protecting those businesses, making sure that uh, nothing happens to them as they form a wall around those, as you said, Ted, longtime businesses there in the area, while also, of course, trying to. Uh, keep the peace and detain the protesters there, some of whom were getting very aggressive. And this has been the staging area. This is about as far as that group was allowed to get before they sent them right down Edgewood and then down Downer Avenue. And uh, you can see the left side of your screen there, people coming out right on the corner there. Uh, that's a tattoo parlor there. and they broke it in. Our father Mark Marhall and Jason Marhall, they broke in our shop. That's Urban Vape and CBD. That's our father's shop. And they broke it in. They, there was glass everywhere. They took a few things. And my dad has a contractor out right now getting ready to board this, this stuff up. How, how many people did you see it happen? We, the, we had two witnesses on this side of the block. They were Urban East Siders. And they basically said that about three black men walked in, bust, they threw a razor scooter into the window, and then they came and took a few things. We're here, me and my brother are here to make sure, and we are on standby to make sure that nobody comes in this fucking shop. Thank you. Again. So you can hear the I'm frustration. If you didn't hear... I'm fucking frustrated. I'm okay, if you didn't hear, this this gentleman here and his brother, their father owns that CBD shop on the west side of the street. He says three men came in through one of the scooters to break the window. We're not sure if they were apprehended or not. Um, you can hear the frustration in his voice clearly and understandably. Um, uh, there's some language being used. We tried to pot down a little bit there. But that is a known... That is the only known vandalism that we have heard of during this march tonight. Not to say that there hasn't been others, we just don't know, we haven't received any reports of it. Um, Basically, it looks like they, I don't know if they've broken any of the glass. Yeah, he's, he's surveying it right now. This is, I think, the first time he's getting a chance to see it as well. 
he was back behind the tattoo shop there on the uh, on the northwest side of the street or the south uh, side the southwest side of the yeah and as you said this business on the west side of the street there you can see the damage the broken glass mm -hmm. that he was referring to when he said that uh, some men had broken into that uh, what I believe he said it was a CBD shop there uh, he saw, it sounds like he and his father run that business uh, and yeah you can understand expressing some frustration and damage interestingly we see the broken glass we see that there was clearly a break in there what we don't see is if anything what was taken if anything was taken right. and when that may have happened uh, as you said Ted this is really the first vandalism that we have seen doesn't mean it didn't happen but the first vandalism we have seen of the of the night tonight on Sunday night uh, through this crowd so we will be interesting to see if there is more and exactly what yeah, if anything was taken from this particular business because this is something we earned we started this business two years ago and my dad saved up all of his money to start this business all of his money he worked his entire life for 20 years to set up a business here on Oakland Avenue just for it to get completely destroyed in one night but we're going to fix it. We're going to board it up because we don't know how long these protests are going to last. So we're going to board up, make sure everything's safe so that no one can come in here again if a second round of protesters or rioters or whatever you want to call them come. What did they take? Did they take anything? I'm not sure. The witnesses said they took just a couple of things and ran out. That was it. But we got, we got very lucky. And the owners over there across the street, Milwaukee Vapor, they got lucky too that they didn't run across the street and the cops got here in time to protect the commercial district on Oakland Avenue. Did you see if any other happened to know if any other businesses got? Uh, other than what was already on the news from you guys, would like just to see mobile. Like, as you were here. No, it was just ours right here on this block. We don't know what happened that way yet. So how long ago did this happen? Was it towards the end of that long procession? Well, I, I think it happened about 45 minutes ago because I was on the police scanner and they were on, uh, were on Maryland and Pro Prospect, and so I was on the police scanner went to pick up my brother and so we need to run right to Oakland because Maryland and Prospect is super close to our dad's shop. So we really came out here as soon as we could. But we don't know if anyone else got affected. So hopefully this doesn't happen again. Like praying to God doesn't happen another night. Yeah. And see what I mean? Like it's, even though now the police left that way, I don't know whether they'll come back, the rioters. So. Thank you. No problem, yeah. Tell the story, right? Now, thank you guys for covering it. Like, seriously. Okay, so you hear the frustration of that, uh, of that gentleman who, whose father, he says, had saved for 20 years to open up a shop. Um, CBD sales becoming legal just recently, in the last few years, right? Um, I know I'm going to get an answer in my ear here in a second, but it, it last year, it's a relatively new shop. Um, I can't remember what was there beforehand, but as CBD shops are popping up all over, and this one on Oakland Avenue, I don't, I don't know that the vape shop across the street sells CBD. It very well might, um, but they're waiting for a contractor to come and put the board out there. He seemed, uh, I don't want to say pleasantly surprised, he seemed a little surprised that the glass cases inside seem to be intact. Um, and that's his brother there. They came down. And that's what struck me earlier, Ted, as I was commenting, that it seems as though a lot of things were intact. Obviously, yeah. there you can see the, the shattered window here, there, the glass, but it, it appeared as though they didn't get in to take too much. It's hard to say from this vantage point, but right. uh, he did say, we got lucky. You heard him say a little earlier, my father started this business and we got lucky. Uh, unlike some others, so. Uh, yeah, and then he pointed north to say, I'm not sure what happened there. I don't think anything happened north of there because that command post has been set up there for a while, anticipating as they made their way up Oakland Avenue. So they weren't allowed to get it much farther north than that. And once you get to that next block, there's a paint store, there's a chiropractic clinic, um, there's a store that sells um, health items. And then on the west side, there's Harry's Restaurant, and there's a little park right there as well in the Little League Field. 
<clears throat> so there's not a lot of businesses there, and I don't think they made it any further north than what we see here. And the CBD shop, I mean, it's not good. Any amount of vandalism, it's not good, clearly. Um, this seems to be the only thing in that area affected. The barbershop seems intact. As you look across the street to Otto's Liquor, so a, a few officers remain, the patrolman there, um, not dressed in the riot gear that the tactical unit was. So is Bill Miston able to hear us yet? He's not. Um, all right, as Andy Conkle points his camera north, and I believe you're still in the city of Milwaukee at that point. So a command center there. Protesters, if they made it into Shorewood, they only made it into parts of Shorewood. They didn't make it all the way to Capitol, uh, Capitol Drive, I can tell you that, um, from someone, an elected official who I spoke to a short time ago, who was at that point right there who thought initially they might let those protesters go to Capitol and head west. Instead, they stopped them, sent them east at Edgewood and then down Downer Avenue, which we followed along. And um, I I'm just going to give a, a huge pat on the back to our chief photojournalist, Andy Conkle, who is, I, I, I don't know if he's got his, um, his Fitbit on him, but I'd like to know how many miles he walked tonight. It's got to be seven to ten miles with a live equipment and a camera on his back, off and backward, as he's followed this, what had been a mostly peaceful protest until we saw the vandalism there at the end that we don't know who's responsible for, but the leader of this protest tonight, this march, Frank Nitti, said throughout the course of the evening, Andy Conkle was near him, he would look into the camera off and say, this is what I wanted, a peaceful protest, a diverse, peaceful protest. Look at it. It's peaceful. We need help. We need allies in this fight, and we're getting them tonight. And this is not good. This is um, a bad takeaway. Well, it certainly isn't. I was able to uh, go out and take a look at these protesters when they were out in full force right around 8.30 tonight. I got to tell you, I've never seen such a large group, and they were peaceful, and they were well organized with, uh, you know, different messages. And I was really struck by the uh, mix of ethnicities in that group. It was just a very, very blended group. And again, doing things very peacefully. And it seems as though at the end of the night, things came to a fe fever pitch. We don't know what the catalyst was. Uh, but up until a few moments ago, things were, were pretty methodical and pretty well organized. Uh, and your heart goes out to people who have, as you heard, you know, they this is their business, their livelihood, and now they're looking to rebuild. Uh, on this night here that started out well but ended in somewhat disarray, at least for this business that we are seeing. We don't know how many businesses have been affected throughout this night of protests. <clears throat> we don't know if police are going to make a statement here or, you know, what happens next. As more units seem to be moving north. A lot of them moving north. Don't know if they're taking up a staging area somewhere else, if they are just clearing out. I don't know why they wouldn't go south if they're heading back into the city, which makes me wonder if they are setting up a new command post somewhere. Andy Conkle, if you can hear me, can you swing the camera back southbound on Oakland as we, uh, there's uh, Otto's Liquor, and uh, there, there just a, it seems the protests have broken up. A few officers are left behind, and officers not in tactical gear, so they must think that the threat, the immediate threat to this area is over. And they have regrouped and headed north. I, But Otto's liquor store seems to be untouched. 
Uh, there's a vape shop. There's a, uh, a hairdresser, a, 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 a barber salon, if you will, and a restaurant all on the east side that seems to be all intact, not touched. The CBD shop on the west side of the street, certainly vandalized as the owners try to take inventory of what may or may not have been taken. And there is Carini's. Um, the owners of Carini's frustrated that they're not allowed to have people in to their restaurant just yet to dine. It's a popular Italian restaurant. Uh, and this is, that's the son of the owner of the CBD shop. And I'm not sure who the gentleman with the mask on. I don't know if they know each other. I don't know if they just had some conversation where they reached some sort of mutual agreement or, but they exchanged a hug. Me and said, I saw you on the news. I got two or three locations broken into in the last 48 hours. He owns a bunch of smoke shops here in Milwaukee. He owns Dearborn Grocers and he sells all, we buy all of our swishers from Dearborn Grocers. Sure. See how, see how this is all connected? Yeah. Do you see this? Yeah. When a small business goes down, the people that sell the products, the grocers, the wholesalers, everyone gets affected when there's chaos. So yeah. he just texted me, Joda did. Chaos will only breed more chaos. And they had all the tear gas I don't know if he wanted his name on. Is that live? Yeah. Uh, we like, Joda. Oh, no. This is yeah. not fun. Man, that's just unbelievable, you know? Yeah, I, I'm a, I don't. Yeah, we're waiting yeah. for the contracts to get out here, but I, ha, you have my deepest sympathies. Yeah, there's cars driving all the way down here. We saw that. We came here like. And what you're seeing here is the remnants of the front window of the CBD shop on Oakland Avenue, the west side of the street. Bag of Bovitas. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they came in here. He lost fifty thousand in products. Yeah, to two I mean, of his cell phone have, stores. Like, he lost 50,000 in products to two of his cell phone, and he told me to be safe. You know, I met Joda years ago, man, when I got in the industry. Sure. That is insane. $50,000? Okay. We are going to wrap up our coverage now, um, and we leave you from that scene on Oakland Avenue, which seems to be, um, uh, the, the crowd has clearly been diminished, broken up, sent south, um, hopefully home, but we don't know for sure. And then police units headed north. So we're not sure exactly why they headed north, but that scene, that particular scene, the scene of some vandalism, we saw the CBD shop, uh, the owner's son said, the witnesses said he saw three men throw one of those uh, electric scooters in to break the window. He's not sure how much inventory he lost. He's clearly upset and rightly so and frustrated. And uh, this, what had been a fairly peaceful, loud, boisterous, but peaceful protest um, with a bad footnote at the end there, uh, the one business there that seems to have been affected on Oakland Avenue. We're going to uh, stay on the scene, but we're going to leave our coverage right now. I don't anticipate that we'll be back unless we need to, and of course we will if we need to. But for now, we're going to wrap it up. We thank you for being with us. Fox 6 Wake Up begins at 4.30, and again, anything breaking will be on fox6now.com. Thank you for being with us. Stay safe tonight, and we appreciate your viewership.